What's going on guys? So back in the garage again, not working on the Super today, but back on the MR2, doing small stuff right now. Uh, I've got the trunk open, which I don't think I showed you guys that last time. Uh, I don't think a lot of people realize there's actually trunk in the back of the car also on top of what's in the front. Uh, the front of the car is mostly just stored for the uh, spare tire, uh, which you can remove and there's actually a ton of room up there too. Uh, it's one of the things I like about this car. It actually has a shit ton of room in it. Um, the actual cabin's really roomy and the trunk and the uh, I guess the under the hood <laughs> is quite roomy also. It makes it quite nice. Uh, what I'm doing right now is actually removing the trunk carpet. Um, the reason this is coming out right now is for the fact that it's like greasy or something like oily residue down here. So I'm gonna soak it and I'm hoping, keyword hoping to um, get the oily residue feeling out of it. I'm wondering where it came from. Uh, I look down here, this doesn't seem to, I mean that I can see or feel or anything. Uh, this doesn't feel bad any shape, way, or form. Looks like one of these broke off at one time. There's other plastic clips. Um, seems to be okay, so it must have just be. It must just be on this. Um, but while I'm doing this, I'm also looking for the stock Toyota MR2 trunk mat. So there was a rubber mat that went in this from the factory. I'm hoping to find one. Uh, I haven't seen many of them, but I'm hoping to find one. While doing this, I wanted to talk to you guys too. And uh, a lot of people ask me like, where the hell is the ECU at? Well, it makes it quite convenient. Um, they're not actually inside the car, but they're in the trunk. And all the wiring runs right there, makes it really convenient. So when you go stand alone or do everything, it's literally right here. Um, this makes it really freaking easy to work on. I, I mean, I know, I haven't worked and pulled the engine yet. Um, and trying to get down there is probably gonna be a nightmare, but man, so far, this thing is way easier than that car to work on. Um, especially ECU wise, instead of me being tucked under the dash and that, everything is right here. Um, Ty at TCS has been helping me a ton, which, uh, as soon as I took the panel off or the trunk mat here off, you can see a giant TCS uh, sticker on it since he originally swapped this car to a Gen 3 motor. Um, I'm just kind of picking it apart, checking where everything's at. Uh, one thing I do have an issue with, I'm going to actually check it here. I'm pretty darn sure that my, um, what's it called, your distributor. Sorry, I'm not used to having a distributor. I've had coil pack cars now for, Jesus. Oh God, years upon years. The last distributor car I had was actually, I had a six gen Celica, which actually got me into the whole 3S GT game, GT4s and etc. But I'm actually gonna take this blue towel here and see if I get any oily residue from underneath. Uh oh, and I don't boys and girls. Hmm, I think the distributor might be okay. My oil leaks somewhere else, which unfortunately is not really a good thing. Um, for the fact that that would have kind of been an easy fix since it's right up top if it's leaking from somewhere else Has me a little concerned to be honest um, You can see it has a little bit of dirt, but it's not wet I mean if it was really leaking with this drops I'm seeing on the ground this thing would have been soaked uh, Maybe I'll dig a little bit more, but it's not looking like a good thing here looking like it's leaking from somewhere else Which is not making me too happy. Um, this is no one's fault Ty. I mean I saw everything that Ty replaced so he didn't touch any like the seals or anything of that nature and he put a new tiny belt and stuff But he threw the motor in uh, so it could have a bad seal somewhere else within the motor, which would kind of stink um, But it would guess kind of give me a reason to yank the motor to do all the seals um, I bet you if I pulled the motor though, I'd sell it and I'd actually I know I'd sell it and I'd get a gen 4 motor um, Just it looks better and I'd probably build it at the same time So I'd have this being built and I'd be building this this winter I really need to be able to do this full time. This is getting out of hand because I can't do both things. But all right, off of this, uh, gonna go ahead and try scrubbing this real quick. And then I got a couple other things I wanna talk with you guys about today. All right guys, so I got that out now. It's sprayed down, you can see the driveways are soaking wet, but hoping this picks up on camera. You guys can see the oil, like that was in that carpet. Now it's over my driveway. Luckily I'm going to restain it or I guess whatever you call it next year, so it won't really matter. But that was all in that carpet. I'm not sure my super was the same way too. I'm not sure what these people do when they buy these cars if they just dump oil back in the trunk of their cars, but it really pisses me off. That's the second time I've had to do it now with uh, one of these cars. I'm not sure if I just get the luck of the draw when it happens, but I mean, it was covered. It wasn't like, oh, it was residue from something else. I mean, that was legit oil. You could see the stain. Uh, if you go back in here, even though the stain in this and you can't feel it, um, in here there's like a little bit of the oil, nothing crazy right there. But the rest of it's good, and I fill it with my hand. There's no residue, but you put anything in there, I'd literally pull it out, and it'd be like wet looking, like it, ha it had oil on it. So this is the part of the video I've been really waiting to get to and what you guys want to see. Um, in this, I'm gonna talk about the differences between two-step and anti-lag. And most people get that confused saying, well, Ryan, two-step and anti-lag are the same thing, and I'm sorry, guys, but it's not. Uh, two-step and anti-lag are actually two different systems. Um, 
Anti-light kind of bases itself off two-step, but they're two different things. Um, the way their ignition works, retardation of the ignition system, uh, the, where they put the fuel at in the system. I'll explain it all here in depth for you. But two-step and anti-lag, right off the bat, I just wanna let you guys know, are two different things. I'm gonna explain that to you here. So first off, let's start with two-step since that's kind of the basis of all this. Two-step is what you're about to see right now. <laughs> You just saw was my friend Zach Clopper's R32 GTR. This was a couple years back at a car show. Um, now you guys are probably saying, well, Ryan, it's popping. And that last little bit, I saw some fire, and you're right, but it's more set as a rev limiter um, and not a not an anti-lag system. So technically, a two-step system is almost like a set rev limiter, just set down lower below a certain uh, mile per hour. So let's do it this way, make this real simple. You have your car. Anything below five miles per hour, so pretty much sitting still. Um, if you try to rev your car out, say to try to rev it up as high as you can, you will set a two-step limit. This two-step limit will cut fuel, cut ignition, and sit there just like you would a rev limiter. The only difference is instead of saying your red line being 7,000 RPMs, you're now sitting at say 4,000, 4,500 RPMs to optimize your launch. Because if you're trying to launch at 7,000 where the engine is, say, at its most crucial point, or it's too high in the limiter, you're gonna either one, have wheel spin, number two, you could damage the motor, et cetera. Uh, by lowering it, you have a better chance of launching the car and going forward with it. Um, now, how does this work? You know, what is two-step in itself? So what you're going to be looking for here is a multitude of things, guys. Um, it's literally four different things. Number one, is your set RPM. Where do you want to be launching at? Where do you want the car? Where is it suited best at to launch from? Where were you trying to hold the limit at before? Um, the best part about two-step is you can hold it to the floor. You no longer have to worry about, oh man, do I have the RPM right? I'm looking at that, trying to slip my clutch as I'm going down the drag strip. Two-step allows you to take that out of the factor. You just hold your foot to the floor. All you need to worry about is slipping the clutch correctly, getting out of the hole right, and getting that perfect 60 foot. So that's the first step you guys need to remember. Next, you're going to be looking at well, your fuel cut, where are you gonna be cutting fuel at? So that's gonna be more like a hard cut for your car, kind of like there's soft cut and hard cut for your uh, rev limiter. You know, there's soft cut and then you have a uh, hard cut. Hard cut would cut ignition and it would cut fuel where soft cut most likely just cuts ignition and keeps going with fuel, which it's a little bit different. I can go into that in another subject. But for this, you're gonna be looking at ignition cut here first and then you're gonna be looking at fuel cut, and then the last and foremost, you're gonna be looking at VSS, which is your vehicle sensor speed, so your vehicle speed, uh, where you would like to be set at. So your vehicle speed, like I said before, you probably set that at, say, under five miles an hour, Just and you people say, well, why five? Why not set it at one miles an hour or two? Well, just for the fact that sensors aren't always perfect, five miles an hour is usually the safe bet in these instances. Uh, you can set it higher, too, I just wouldn't recommend it. I actually made the mistake once with my Toyota Supra here. Um, I was messing around with the Infiniti years ago and I set it too high and I went to rev the car out in first gear. When I went to take off, it stopped me at 4,800 RPMs and it fell on its face and scared the living crap out of me. So don't make the mistake I did, guys. Now, by doing this, now you have now set yourself a new technical rev limiter or a new two-step. And kind of the reason for two steps is because now you have two sets of rev limiters. You have your first, which is your two-step, your launch, and then after you get over that five mile an hour mark, you now have your normal rev limiter, say it's 7,000, so that's at your second step of your, well, of your two-step system. Um, technically, people are like, well, that's not right, Ryan. Two-step is the part where you're actually launching from. Yes, but the whole reason it's called two-step because you have two different steps of your ignition cut. I know it's very confusing and it can be hard for people to understand. So guys, that's the basics of the two-step system. I hope that clears that up a little bit. Now let's get over to the part where people really like to see, and that's anti-lag. So what is anti-lag? Anti-lag is what I have on my Supra and is what causes this. what everyone at car shows, drag strip, this is what everyone uses to help launch their car. Now, at car shows, people do it because, well, it sounds cool and it looks cool. It makes that loud bang and shoots fire. But why does it do that? How does it do that? Well, I'm trying to try and explain to you how it and why it does this. So here's where two-step and anti-lag are kind of the same. Here's where we're going to be doing ignition retard instead of ignition cut, though. Um, what's that mean here? So on your intake stroke, as the uh, the piston right here is coming down, here's the top, here's TDC. As your piston's going down, you're going to ignite that fuel mixture, that air and fuel mixture, later in that stroke. What this causes is that means that, that burning sensation, <laughs> which sounds horrible, that burning that's happening is happening later in the stroke. So when your piston is now coming back up for its exhaust stroke, all that unburnt fuel, all that unused air is now going over to the turbocharger where that hot manifold is, the hot turbine is, 
causing combustion almost inside the manifold, inside the ex hot exhaust housing, causing that loud pop and bang that you're also used to hearing, causing the turbo to spool up faster, causing it to keep boost right off the line. That's what's giving you that bang, bang, pop, pop that everyone loves and lives for. So again, guys, you're coming down off your intake stroke, you're firing the ignition system later in that stroke. Once you're coming back up on the exhaust stroke, that unburnt fuel, that unused air is going over into the exhaust manifold, going over to the turbo and being used. That's what's giving you that awesome noise, that, 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 that sensation that everyone loves at every car show when you're going off the line. That's the basics. I'm not giving you guys everything, but that's the basics of it. I just wanted to clarify that two-step and anti-lag are definitely two different systems. Uh, two-step is literally just meant to have another set rev limiter. It's great for the NA guys, um, and it works for turbocharged cars too. It will still build boost because you're still holding at a certain RPM. You're still having uh, the motor still obviously rotating. You're gonna build some boost, but it's nothing like doing anti-lag. What's gonna give you, say you want 25 PSI off the line. You can set your boost controller, say I want 25 PSI, I needed this rev limiter, I need an ignition cut here, boom, done, it can do it all day long. Um, where two steps not going to do that. You're just literally setting another rev limiter at a lower RPM, which is great for NA guys. For a turbocharged car, I don't really see the point in it, just me being honest. Um, because you're gonna bog off the line. I mean, with a two-step, you guys are just, it's gonna fall flat in its face each and every time. That's my opinion. Um, you guys can wholeheartedly disagree with me, but I just wanted to give you the whole subject matter on this. So guys, thank you very much as usual. Um, I hope this helped you out some. I get this question a lot. Yes, this explanation is not perfect by any stretch of the means, but it gives you the basic understanding of what anti-lag is and what two-step is. Um, if there's anything else you guys would like to see regarding these type of things, uh, anything more on the Supra or I gotta start working on the MR2 here because it's leaking oil from the distributor. Yippee, I should have got a cool pack Gen 4 car, whatever. Um, so if there's anything else you guys would like to know, let me, uh, let me know. Shoot me a message down on Facebook or Instagram. I'm always on there, always posting way ahead of time. So thank you guys very much and I'll talk to you later. Peace.